From a very young age, Mike Tyson proved himself worthy of respect in the boxing ring. However, his skills continue to be questioned by fighters and fans who do not sympathize with the legacy that the indestructible knockout machine secured with nothing but the devastating force of his fists. Larry Holmes has been one of the many arrogant fighters who mocked the possibilities of Tyson defeating some of the most prominent figures in the discipline back then. But what happened when it was his turn to face the youngest heavyweight champion in history? Welcome. In today's video, I invite you to join me in dusting off the archives of the fight between Mike Tyson and Larry Holmes. Stay until the end. You won't believe what the fourth episode was like. Tyson, at 21, was 17 years younger than Holmes, who was 38. Probably, Larry's experience could play in his favor. But having been out of the ring for 21 months was a factor that it was unknown if instead it would harm him. One factor that did harm him was his sharp tongue, using it as a tool of discredit against who was already the youngest heavyweight champion in history. For Holmes, a fighter with Mike Tyson's profile wouldn't have survived his first fight in the 70s. Holmes used to joke that Joe Frazier would slap him so hard he'd send him back to preschool, or that Ali could jab him all day if he wanted. Also, he often talked about not being able to fight Ken Norton and that George Foreman would only take two seconds to beat him. All these statements shed light on a regrettable fact, which was that the legendary Larry Holmes felt no respect for the professional career Tyson had forged at such an early age. Being boxing a gentleman's discipline, Tyson, even at his age, knew that the final word was always in the fists. So, on January 22nd, 88, he let an exquisite demonstration of good boxing be his best defense. The Atlantic City Convention Center in New Jersey was designated as the venue to host all those who wanted to witness this moment in the history of the sport. It wasn't just two boxing machines stepping into the ring. It was a battle for the absolute crown of the division. Tyson had to ensure he successfully defended his International Boxing Federation heavyweight title for the second time, the World Boxing Association title for the fourth time, and the World Boxing Council title for the fifth. Everything seemed to indicate that it wouldn't be such a difficult task, as the odds favored him even at 8-1. to one. Holmes was the one who had to prove that he could also beat Tyson in two seconds and start boasting about his own skills rather than those of others. His professional record was a good resume for the job. With 48 victories, 34 of them by knockout, and only being defeated twice before. But Tyson had no reason to worry when looking at his opponent's past. He had already built a good resume for himself, eight of them by knockout, without being defeated. Could Larry Holmes deliver his first taste of bitter defeat? That was the question hanging in the air. With the sound of the bell, Tyson launched himself at Holmes without any fear. Holmes relied on his good footwork to move around the ring, avoiding exchanging blows with Tyson. Now the young guy is Chasery Holmes that I want to remember. Occasionally, the former champion was reached and halted by the fists of the current unified champion. It seemed like Holmes was going for the first reconnaissance round that many fighters need to study their opponent and come up with a strategy. However, Tyson trusted his ability to secure victory from the very first second. Trying to pick up the pace. Butler. Holmes' 21 months out of the ring were taking their toll. Tyson rushed at Larry at the start of the second round, and he just lay motionless waiting for him to arrive. His movements around the ring began to seem like cowardly attempts to avoid confrontation. Every time Tyson got close enough to attack, Holmes would clinch, reducing the chances of that happening. Knocking out Joe Lewis. I'm a huge fan of Holmes. He's an easy target for Mike. Occasionally, he would use his fists to counterattack and try to stop Mike's intense offense. But it seemed like he had started fighting a battle for survival from the very first second. In his career, he's never been hurt. And I hope he doesn't get hurt tonight. In a scheduled 12-round encounter, there was still plenty of time for him to flee if he intended to make it to the final round standing. By reducing his movements, Holmes became an easy target for Tyson's hard punches. His defense seemed to have some vulnerabilities, and his counterattacks seemed inadequate compared to his opponents. Jeb, notice that's a foreign Jeb. Larry never. Tyson has a lot of respect for the former ability of Larry, but he has to do what he has to do. 
By the time Tyson's sadistic combinations began to rain down on him from all sides, Holmes realized he had gotten himself into a situation from which he wouldn't easily escape. And there's the bell ending the round. Despite his poor boxing display, Holmes wanted to play the tough guy at the start of the fourth round. With his fists down, he jumped around the ring inviting Tyson to attack him, if he was so brave. With his attitude, he only showed his arrogant nature and the little respect he had for his opponent. But against a boxing machine like Iron Mike was at the time, these provocations come at a high price. Mike started closing the distance between them, trying to corner him against the ropes. But the arrogant giant resorted to cowardly clinches to have Joe Cortez put some distance between them again. His own strategy was his downfall when, in the center of the ring, Mike landed a powerful combination that sent him back to the canvas for the first time. Right now, getting through this fourth round is the biggest problem. Oh, right hand! Down! Go! Holmes got up immediately, and the fight resumed after the mandatory eight count. Tyson had had enough of his opponent's foolish attitude, and he wasn't going to let him waste his time any longer. Amidst the attack, Holmes tried again to free himself by going to Tyson's body, but he was smarter and delivered the right blows to knock him down for the second time. Holmes, staggering, got up at the count of five. The fight resumed, and with it, Tyson's offensive intensity increased. Like a predator to its prey, Tyson chased Holmes around the ring, waiting for the perfect opportunity to land the blow that would leave him seeing stars. Seek and you shall find. And cornering him against the ropes, seven seconds before the end of the round, a brief flurry of punches left Holmes inert on the canvas. Mike showing patience again, set for the big shot. Right hand hurt Larry again. He's back at his heels, left in the eyes. Larry gets nailed with the left hand, the right hand, digs to the body, goes to throw right hand, just clipped with a big... It's over, said the commentators as Holmes lay with his arms spread on the canvas. The arrogant fighter who tried to humiliate Tyson had been annihilated in just under four rounds. This time, Joe Cortez didn't even need to start the safety count. On the contrary, he hesitated whether to call a coroner to collect the remains of the great fighter that had been scattered after the massacre that took place during the last minutes of the fight. Although he didn't receive the same from his opponent, Tyson praised Holmes in the post-fight interview. He was a legendary fighter, he said. If he were in his prime, he wouldn't stand a chance, he continued. After this tough defeat, Holmes decided to take a break from the boxing rings. To recover from his encounter against the youngest heavyweight champion in the world, he needed a little over three years. However, he returned to the scene in 1991 and remained active until 2002, the time of his definitive retirement. If you've made it this far, I appreciate it. I remind you that if you enjoyed the story, there's no better way to support my content than by leaving your like on the video. Do you have some free time left? You can always take a look at my channel. There you'll find videos that will help you relive the best and worst moments in boxing history, available to accompany you at any time of your day. Now that you know the story behind the fight between Mike Tyson and Larry Holmes, what do you think went wrong in Holmes' strategy to face Iron Mike? I'll be reading your comments.